Hey everybody, welcome back to NetTouch Plus. I am your host, Jeffrey Way, and in this lesson, we'll be taking a look at Require.js, but a little less Require.js and a little more the Require.js Optimizer. So if you would like to learn more about how Require.js works, how it loads asynchronously, how it takes care of dependency management, we have a Touch Plus Premium video that just went up today. So be sure to check that out if you are a member. But in this lesson, I want to focus less on the JavaScript aspect and more on the CSS, which a lot of people don't know Require.js can handle. So what we're gonna take a look at right here is optimizing one single file. So what we see here is once we reference the optimizer tool, r.js, we can pass in a CSS file and then specify what should come out. And what that essentially means is it will compress it. So what you might be thinking though is, well, why go to all this trouble? Why not go to a site like cssdrive.com and then just paste in your style sheet? And the reason is, okay, maybe for small projects that will do just fine. But when you're working on something where you're constantly deploying, that's very quickly going to waste your time. And what you need to do is integrate this into a build tool. And your second thought might be, well, why don't I just use one of the popular command line tools to take care of this. And you can do that, but assuming that you're also using Require.js, or you will shortly, this is a smart solution. And it also has some cool tricks that I'll show you. All right, so the first step is we want to download that file. So at the very top, we'll go to download, and you can see that if you're working with Node, and remember, that doesn't mean you have to be building a Node project. It just means that Node is available, and it's extremely simple to install at this point. So once you install Node and NPM, it's as simple as running npm install require.js in the directory that you're running. Now, alternatively though, at first, let's just download it manually. So here we go. I'm gonna click on the download link right there. And now this is all we really need. Okay, so let's come back to the desktop. I'm gonna create a directory called require learning. And now we're gonna create a handful of files. So we'll begin with an index.html. And what you are probably used to is referencing maybe, first you have your reset file, and then maybe you have something else. Maybe you have 960 if you're still using that. Maybe you have something for typography. You have all of these dependencies, assumed dependencies. And then you have your style sheet. Now the problem with this is you have to remember the order. That's never a great idea. And second, all of these additional HTTP requests can make your website or application lag. Now a better solution is to reduce this down to one. Now I'll show you what we can do here. I'm gonna create a new file and we'll call it style.css. And what you might be familiar with is doing imports like this. Import URL reset.css. I don't have that file yet, so let me go ahead and create it. I will use the NetTouch plus fetch plugin to pull in a reset file. And now we have imported that reset file. But what you may be aware of is this is generally considered a bad practice because there are performance issues involved with it. But if we use that require.js optimizer tool, what it will do is it will grab all of those imports and merge them together and then compress that output. So you run the optimizer tool, the generated file is what ends up being deployed and displayed to your users, but during development, you can still use this all you want because it's not actually ever going to see a production server. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. Within here, we're simply going to simulate some kind of style.css, we'll say margin zero, background red. So now we have our two files how can we take advantage of that optimizer? Well, I'll create a new directory called JS and within it, a libs directory for libraries and we'll paste in that RJS file. In this case, I could copy and paste it, but I also have it stored to NetTouch fetch and we'll paste it in like so. Now I want you to note, we're not importing that file anywhere. We don't need it. We're just using it on the command line. So now we're ready to try it out. I'm gonna switch over to the terminal where I have this directory opened up. So the first step is we can either use Node or Java to run this optimizer. Now as Node.js is so easy to install at this point, it's literally a one-click solution. That's what I'm going to recommend you get set up. But it's very possible you already have Node and NPM set up. So at this point, we're going to run Node and now it needs a path to that R.js file. Well, we placed it within JS libs R.js. Now we can set up the output. We'll begin by giving it some CSS. What is the CSS that's going in? Well, in this case, it will be the CSS directory and style.css. Note that I'm not referencing both of them because style imports reset. So that way we can just work with a single file. And then the out, we have those results. Where are we going to take the output and put it? 
And why don't we put it maybe into a build directory within CSS and we'll call it style.min.css. And now that's run. If I run tree again, you'll see that it has created this new directory. And if we want to run cat build CSS style, you can see that it contains that entire reset file, but it also contains the container. Very cool. If we come back to sublime text and we open this directory up, we have everything we need. Those have been merged, but as you might be aware of, it didn't compress anything. And that's because that's not the default. We have to tell it that we want to compress the output. So let's do this. Let's go back to the terminal and I'm going to remove with recursive force that entire build directory and get rid of it entirely. And then we're going to run everything again, but this time we're going to add another one called optimize CSS. And I'm going to make that equal to default. So now once again, that's going to run, it's going to create that directory. But now if we open it, it has been compressed using the default settings. There's also a handful of others, whether there should be line breaks, whether comments should be preserved. And if you'd like to research that more, you can go to the r.js GitHub page and there is an example build file that you can look. And this has all of the settings that you can do. So in this case, I'll look for optimize CSS and you can see there's options for standard dot keep lines none at all, keep comments, keep comments and keep lines. Notice that they're using period, keep comments, period, keep lines. So this is very cool, but there's one problem that is a lot to remember. And are we expected to write that every time? No, there's a couple ways. You can watch a directory using something like guard and then execute this every time. Or if you want, why don't we just copy this entire thing and then let's create a new bin directory and then we'll call it optimize. So we will begin by setting up that this is actually a shell script. User bin environment is shell. And now anything here will be executed as a shell script. So we're just gonna run Node.js and now I'll click save. Now this alone won't be enough though, because if I come back, I'm still in the root of my directory. And if I run bin optimize, yeah, we're gonna get permission denied. So we need to chmod that directory, bin slash optimize. And now we can run it as a shell script. So one more time, let's remove that build directory and we'll call bin optimize one more time. And now we did that exact same thing, but it's much easier for us to write. Still one problem though, this is a little messy. Wouldn't it be nice, we are working with Node and we are working with require.js. Wouldn't it be nice if we just had build settings that was in a nice and neat object and we didn't have to do it like this? Well, we can actually. Why don't within the CSS directory, we have a css.build.js file. And this will be the build script essentially for your CSS files. And now we can just pass an object like this, something we're all familiar with. You can do the same thing, set up CSS in, what out, optimize CSS. You can refer to that sample page on GitHub for more settings if you need them. So the location of this file will be the base URL. So at this point, we don't need to go into the CSS directory because it's already in there. So at that point we would do style.css. The output would be go out into a build directory, style.min.css. And then of course, optimize CSS will be set to default. And that's all we need to do. So now if we come back to the terminal, we can do the same thing as before. Node, now we're gonna pass the location to r.js, but rather than doing CSS in, out, setting all of those parameters, we're simply going to refer to the css.build file. I execute that and the exact same thing is going to happen once again. But now we have a much cleaner way to handle this. If you need to make updates, that's a more sane way to do it. And of course, if you do wanna update your bin, you can still do that. You would simply change this to what we typed in before. So we'll save that, remove the build directory, run it one more time to make sure it's working, bin optimize, and of course, it is working how we would expect. Now, the final thing we're gonna take a look at is using the NPM module for require.js rather than downloading the file. So I'm going to delete that JS directory entirely. Now we have no reference to r.js and I'll also get rid of the build directory while I'm at it. So at this point, I'm gonna come back and within our root directory for this project, we're going to NPM install require.js. However, before we do that, if we wanna make our project as portable as possible, meaning that we can put it up on GitHub and people can clone it and immediately install the dependencies, before I do that, I'm going to create a package.json file. And this is where we can set up any dependencies that we might have. So within here, we'll say, what is the name of our project? We'll just say my project. Maybe we'll set a version. 
and that should be fine for now. Normally you have a lot more though. So now what we can do is we can once again run npm install require.js, but I also can specify that I want to save that. And what that's going to do is it's going to update this package.json file. And that way, again, if somebody clones it on GitHub, they can then at that point run npm install, and that's going to install all of the dependencies, sort of like Bundler for Rails. So now you can see that we have this new directory node. It brought in require.js. We now have access to that file. But also within the bin directory, we have access to r.js. And then at this point, we can simply run r.js and then set the path to where css.build.js. Normally, again, this would be maybe an app.build that would be responsible for your entire project. But I run that, and once again, it goes ahead and creates that, and that's a much quick and cleaner way to do it. But again, if you're not working with Node.js, then you can still download that file or use nettouch plus fetch to bring it in. But that's a clean and fast way to take care of the process of quote unquote combining your style sheets, optimizing it. It turns it into just a few keystrokes. Now you could also use tools like Live Reload or CodeKit offers that. Honestly, I found that when I'm dependent upon a specific app, I have a tendency to regret it in the future, maybe when I'm on a different laptop and now I expected CodeKit to handle all of these specific optimizations like merging them, but now I don't have that resource available to me. So many times I just like to stick with command tools, but I would love to hear what you think. So as always, for more tips and tutorials, pay attention to NetTouch Plus. You also want to take a look at touchplus.com, which is our premium service where we have countless courses and videos and eBooks and tons of great stuff, which I contribute to quite a bit. So again, my name is Jeffrey Way, and I'll see you next time. Bye.